Meantime, there's this, a provocative column appearing in the Washington Post suggesting that white men are really the ones to blame for America's mass shootings. The article is written by twins, identical twins, Charlotte and Harriet Childress, who describe themselves as researchers and consultants on social and political issues. The twins say that they have received almost a million dollars in taxpayer-funded grants from the National Science Foundation throughout their careers. And in this column, they argue that if life were equitable, white male gun rights advocates would be asked to explain, among other things, what facets of white male culture create so many mass shootings? And why do white men buy, sell, and manufacture guns for profit, attend gun shows, and demonstrate for unrestricted gun access disproportionately more than people of other ethnicities or races? Those are just a few of the questions thrown out by Charlotte and Harriet. Joining me now, Lars Larson, who is a white male gun owner, and a syndicated radio yeah. host with Compass Media Networks, and Leslie Marshall, who's a syndicated radio talk show host and a Fox News contributor. Lars, you want to take a shot at that? Sure, I'd be glad to take a shot at it because the sisters, the twins, live right in my backyard. And as you said, they got a million bucks in taxpayer money to produce a bunch of drivel. And here's where the drivel doesn't add up. If you look back over the last 30 years, there have been 65 mass shooting events in the United States. About 40 of them were committed by white males, evil white males. Now, I didn't go to college at Albany Law School like you did, but I can do the math on that. That's about 70%. And strangely enough, white people are about 70% of the United States population. So it seems as though white males or white people are not overrepresented or underrepresented in these evil acts of murder. The other thing to think about is those acts of murder took the lives of about 500 people just over and injured or wounded about 500 more. That's about seven and a half deaths per year. It would take Chicago, well, probably about the first month of the year to have that many gun homicides, but those are mostly done with pistols, which the president and the liberal nuts in Congress are not trying to control. And I'd love to see how Leslie, is Leslie going to indict me as a white male and a possible future terrorist? <laughs> Leslie? <laughs> well, I, I am not a white male and I don't have a gun and glad I'm not living in the backyard having written this, Lars. Uh, but I have to say, first of all, with regard to Chicago, Please look at that. I was very happy for them. Past two months there, uh, their homicide rates are actually down to numbers back in the 50s. They're hoping for less than 300 at the end but of 2013. But their prosecution rates stink. <laughs> less than yeah, one no, a day. No, I, I agree. Wow. I their agree prosecution you, Megan, rates I'm, stink. I'm, I'm, I, I am very conservative on crime as a liberal, which many liberals aren't happy with me uh, with, and I agree with you on that 100%. Mm -hmm. Lars, with regard to this, and when you talk about how, you know, how many white men are in the population, we do have to look yes. at realities and facts, okay? The majority of men in prison are white. The majority of murders are committed by white men. Rapes, pedophiles, abductions, and massacres. When we in this country are saying, okay, regardless of where you and I may stand with guns, we all agree mental illness has to be addressed, that these people need treatment, and that we want to keep guns out of people like this's hands. So why isn't a, a valid question to pose, one, and two, something that perhaps the NRA, these women, our government, state by state, should consider so that we can make our country safer when these white men, serial killers even, obviously, even at a young age, have many times mental but, but let me illness, say this. which is not But let me addressed. say this, because these, right. these twins may disagree with you on that, Leslie, because they say, mm -hmm. White men try yep. to divert attention from gun control when they talk yep. about mental health issues. That's just the white guys trying to say, look over here, look over here, there's no gun issue. It's all about mental health because they say that women and girls who have mental health issues don't pick up guns and go out and create mass shooting situations, Lars. Meg Megan, can I take a shot of that? Yeah, because that's for you. here's the thing if there is a, a racial component to it, I believe. I believe that it is entirely a mental health issue. Crazy people kill people in this country, mm -hmm. like it or not. Mm -hmm. But if there's a racial component to you, Leslie is a little wrong on her facts. Almost 50% of the murders in this country are of victims who are black. 
mostly black men. And nearly all of the black men shot or killed by some other means in this country are killed by other black men. Now, black men only make up 7% of the U.S. population, yet they make up 50% of the U.S. population of homicide victims. And as I said, the most likely person for a black man to be murdered by is another black man. So if you want to focus on gender or race, those are the real statistics. But the fact that these sisters say the white power structure is the thing that diverts everyone's attention by blaming mental illness. Gee, take a look at Adam Lanza. Take a look at Jared Luffner. Take a look at James Holmes. Take a look at uh, Mr. Roberts, the man who shot up the Clackamas Mall and murdered two people. They're crazy. That's the problem. It's not about gender and it's not about race. I mean, obviously there have been, there have been unfortunately, many uh, mass murderers who are not who are not white men. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, there's been too mm -hmm. many in general, and there's been too many people mm -hmm. of color and people who are white as well. I mean, John Allen Muhammad, the, the D.C. sniper, comes to mind. Sung Wee Cho, who mm -hmm. shot up Virginia Tech, comes to, comes to mind. But in any event, the, they, 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 the, the folks who are, like, expanding on this a little further, Leslie, and the Wall Street Journal did an interesting retort by James, James Taranto to the, to the mm -hmm. Twins piece, points out that some of the folks who are on board with this theory have taken it to another level, suggesting it is, it is white men who commit these crimes and that it is white men who advocate on behalf of uh, guns in this country because they have another issue. And they cite somebody from BuzzFlash uh, as saying, and I quote, you won't find anyone willing to dare, it, dare say it much in the media, but a good percentage of the white men who oppose gun control of any sort are just afraid that without their guns, their phallic power will be reduced to size. Oh. Oh. You can feel at least temporarily reassured when a long-barreled assault weapon compensates for just another average manhunt, manhood. So they go on to, and this is not the first time, let's be honest, that we've heard people say this, that if you like guns, it's because mm -hmm. you're trying to overcompensate for something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, um, it you reminds me, me of what that, was it, the, the No, movie. I'm giving and that I to got, Leslie first. I got this a lot. This is what I want, Liz. Uh, I remember years ago a movie called Bobby Deerfield in which they said a race car was the an extension of a man's, um, you know, uh, genitalia. And, and I guess you could say that guns sometimes are, or overcompensating, maybe the Napoleon complex. But with reality in this country, when we look at the NRA, which is mostly white in membership and does benefit from the uh, manufacture and sale of guns, guns and when we look at who patronizes gun shows and who's selling in the majority of that composite and yes that is the majority of our overall uh, population we can't ignore the fact that before Newtown I as a Democrat was floored that all of a sudden the NRA would want to pay for more armed officers which there were in Columbine by the way armed officers in that school and One. it's almost anything but anything but the gun and then those on the right my buddies like Lars think all of us on the left just want to take away guns take away ammunition where most of us myself included yeah. say look we got to look at everything and this is a multi comprehensive multifaceted approach that well, is these needed ladies don't to protect our nation to look at everything. and our they children they, they're not talking about mental health they're talking about white guys who need to all right, Megan, I think you'd have to consult with Tina Larson about any alleged incapacity. But with <laughs> I regard don't think to I'll race, be doing that. <laughs> go and go and ask black leaders in America what it was that protected them from Klan lynchings in the 40s and 50s and why black Americans in the South organized some of the first NRA chapters because they understood that a black man with a gun was a good defense against a white Klan member. Okay, we'll leave it at that. Interesting right. segment, as always. Lars, Leslie, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.